for joining us to learn more about free TAFE and local um, free TAFE pathways. I'm Narelle, I'm a career advisor at the Skills and Jobs Centre which is based here at Go TAFE and it is with deepest respect that we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the, of the, of the lands on which we operate, the Yorta Yorta, Bangarang, Tungarung and Wurundjeri peoples whose social, spiritual, economic and cultural connections continue to flourish. We pay respects to all Elders, past, present and emerging and extend respect to all Indigenous peoples here today. Tonight we're going to share with you some information around Skills and Jobs Centres, the new free TAFE pathways and how you can access local university as an adult. We'll be joined by Billy Ann Dillon, a former Go TAFE student and hear how she transitioned from TAFE to university. We're also joined by our education partners, Alicia from La Trobe University and Karen from Melbourne University. And after the presentation, we'll have some um, time for questions. Um, we can do that together as a group or you can come and chat to us privately as well. All right, so let's get started with what skills and job centres do. So the Victorian Government launched Skills and Jobs Centres in 2015 and placed the centres in local TAFEs. Your local Skills and Jobs Centre is located here in the GoTAFE Fry Street campus and we have them also at our campuses including Benalla, Seymour, Wangaratta and Wallen. Skills and Jobs Centres are open to everyone in community aged 18 years and over and we provide qualified and independent career guidance. We take a person-centred approach to our service provision and we respect the right of individuals to make their own decisions. The service was set up so everybody in community had access to qualified career guidance. The services that we offer include working with people to develop their own career plan, looking at course options in the context of their own unique personal circumstances, information on courses locally and elsewhere, tips on job searching, resumes and application letters, and information on local skill shortages. We do referrals to employment supports, agencies and welfare support, and what we don't know, we go and find out for you. If it's not something that sits within our scope of expertise, then we just refer you out to someone that could support you. So who can use the centres? Pretty much anyone. You just need to be over the age of 18 um, and have left school. And if that's your scenario, then we can help you. You might already be working in a job, uh, thinking about doing something differently. You could be a current or prospective student or maybe reconsidering your career direction. You might be coming from overseas with existing qualifications or need help understanding the Australian job market. All of these cohorts can be supported by Skills and Job Centres free of charge. Employers might have difficulty attracting employees and need our assistance at things like job fairs um, so that we can help promote opportunities for work to community. We've worked collaboratively with Grow Greater Shepparton and local employers and have created awareness of job opportunities in local industries and combined quick skills training with that and industry tours to create work opportunities for local people. So we welcome opportunities to work with industry and to support them and help them develop their workforce. All right, let's kick into free TAFE pathways. So just a bit of background for you. The Victorian Government introduced free TAFE for priority courses on the 1st of January in 2019 and the idea behind that was to reduce the financial barrier for students wanting to train in courses that could lead for jobs in demand. So that's why the government set them up. The types of courses range from things like pre-apprenticeship courses in trades to higher qualifications in accounting, IT, childcare, disability, welfare and nursing. More than 2,000 students had accessed free TAFE across Go TAFE in the first year of its introduction and over 39,000 students commenced free TAFE across Victoria. At the beginning of this year, 2023, there were over 50 free TAFE courses available throughout TAFEs in Victoria. So 
So what's new? In January of this year, the Victorian Government introduced free TAFE pathways and that enables individuals to be able to access a number of free TAFE qualifications within a particular pathway. So this is new this year and not a lot of people know that it exists. There are actually 12 pathways available and they're up on screen for you now. And the ones that are available through GoTAFE campuses locally are highlighted in yellow for you. So some of the benefits that can come from participating in free TAFE courses are that there's study that leads to jobs in high growth areas, so they're jobs in demand, and the training provides the skill set for those jobs in demand. It's low cost study because the tuition fees are covered by the Victorian Government. You can access multiple qualifications so you can keep progressing your skill development if you choose, which is a big change from the, the first free TAFE. You can actually study more than one qualification within a pathway. There could be potential credits from one level to the next, depending on the training package rules, and you've got potential to use a certificate for work history or diploma level study to access university and potentially get credits into university study. So we're going to take a look at a couple of uh, pathways because I'm thinking that this might explain it a little bit clearer for you, how they work and how they can be of benefit. So the first example we're going to have a look at is John. So John lives in Andira and he's a permanent resident. He's interested in community services work and he's thinking of retraining. He currently works in customer service at council. He's never accessed free TAFE before and he'd like to consider university study in the future. So John has experienced his own mental health challenges in the past and he has a particular interest in this area. What could John study? So John could study any of the courses listed in the free TAFE community services pathway and not pay tuition fees. So that's all the ones you can see on the screen. Given John's not worked in the sector, he'd probably be best to start at a Certificate 4 level if he has the literacy and numeracy to do so. If he wanted to study any of the Certificate 4 courses and then proceed to Diploma of Community Services, he just needs to bear in mind that there's a limit of two qualifications in a year and two skill sets in a year. But John has a few options. And after he completes his Certificate 4 qualification, he might look for some community services work so he could begin to apply some of the skills that he's learned and be networking in the sector. He could go on and maybe do diploma study, either directly or while working. And this would give him some really great skills for case management work and more complex work. And if John loved the study and wanted to continue, then he could look at potentially advanced standing for his university entrance, which might give him some credits into his degree. There might be some other options for university entrance, and our guest speaker, Billy, will share her journey, and you can hear how she achieved this. Given that John hasn't studied for some time, he might like to ease into study by looking at some free TAFE short courses. So two courses in the community services sector under free TAFE are identifying and responding to family violence risk and the introduction to the NDIS. And starting off with learning in something like a short course skill set might help John build his study skills and his confidence before he launched into something like a certificate for. Okay, now we have George. So George is 22 years old and he's living in Shepparton. He's accessed free TAFE for accounting and bookkeeping in 2020. And he started the course, but he didn't complete it as the lure of earning money and getting some savings behind him during back into labouring work. And now he's built up a nest egg to support his study and he is considering re-engaging in the accounting and bookkeeping course. He has some concerns about whether he can do that through free TAFE, given he already started a free TAFE course. So in George's case, he can still use free TAFE because the course he started and didn't complete is listed in the free TAFE pathway. 
if he had studied a different free TAFE course and then wanted to study accounting and bookkeeping, he wouldn't be eligible for free TAFE tuition and he'd have to pay. But given George hasn't worked in the field before and he wants to start, we'd be suggesting a certificate four as his um, entrance course. And then if he wanted to, he could go through and do the diploma of accounting and he could do all of that through a free TAFE pathway. And our final example is Hannah. So Hannah worked in hospitality in 2020 and was studying a certificate three in hospitality and she used her free TAFE. Her work was impacted by COVID and during that time, she started to rethink her career direction. She'd always wanted to work with children and had decided she'd like to study a certificate three in early childhood education and care. She's a low income earner and she has a healthcare card. So in Hannah's case, she's already accessed free TAFE, so she can't access, access it again. She can, however, undertake another certificate three course of study and access government subsidised training. She's also a concession card holder, so she can get concession rates on her certificate three. If she wanted to, she could continue on and study a diploma but she wouldn't be able to use her concession card at a diploma level. Hannah might like to consider other options, like using her networks and seeing whether an employer would employ her. She might prefer to do an earn and learn model for her study, and she could do that through a traineeship and receive a traineeship wage. In Hannah's case, if she hadn't accessed the free TAFE course for the hospitality, she would have been eligible to do her certificate three in early childhood education and care and her diploma in early child, childhood, all through free TAFE pathways. Okay, now, am I eligible is often the big question. So eligibility for Skills First funding takes into account a number of things. Um, it's, it's about your personal circumstances, and it's going to require us to, some, to ask some questions about prior study that you might have done or started. We also need to ask questions around citizenship and um, potentially visa entitlements as well. Some visas are linked to special programs that would make you eligible, but most aren't. And some programs like the Skill First Youth Access Initiative could mean that you could access other, other sources of study to be able to participate in courses. But in general, you can access one free TAFE course in your lifetime or multiple free TAFE courses in a pathway. And this is the major change for 2023, are these multiple free TAFE pathway courses. You need to be an Australian um, or citizen or New Zealand citizen or a permanent resident in about 99% of the cases to access free TAFE, and you must be studying in Victoria through a TAFE, which is why they're called free TAFE courses. You need to be 17 years of age when the course commences. You can't study any more than two certificates and two skill sets at a time in a year. You need to have the required literacy and numeracy for the course that you're applying for, which we determine through an online assessment. And these rules that I'm giving you are basic guidelines, but there are complexities because we're all individuals and we've all done different things. So the best bet is certainly to get someone at GoTAFE to have a look at your scenario and your situation and allow us to provide some guidance on, on eligibility. All right, if you need further information, where can you go to get it? So further information on any GoTAFE courses, visit the GoTAFE website and just log an inquiry and someone will follow that up for you. If you're looking for career guidance, you can book a free session through the GoTAFE website by going to the Plan Your Future area and requesting career services. You can also just pop into the, to the campus or phone up the campus and we can arrange an appointment for you as well. All right, and it's now my pleasure to introduce Alicia Thompson. Please make her welcome. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, 
Hi everyone, so I'm Alicia, I work at the Shepparton campus here, so literally just across the road, um, and I work in student recruitment, so any questions you have about uni, um, about courses, about pathways and everything like that, I handle them from a local level, but can also help at other um, campuses as well. So Narelle did a fantastic um, acknowledgement of country, but just want to uh, reiterate that, and we pay our respects to Indigenous elders past, present and emerging, and extend those respects to any Indigenous participants as joining us today. So first I'm just going to go a little bit about La Trobe um, and our history and what we're known for and then we'll jump into how you can actually access uh, university study. So La Trobe is ranked in the top 1% of universities worldwide so it's a really great statistic that we do like to always mention because we're very very proud of it. And we have five main campuses around Victoria. So predominantly we are a Victorian um, university and we have five main campuses, our largest of which is in Bundura, so our Melbourne campus. And then we have Bendigo, Orbe, Donga, Mildura and Shepparton. There are two additional campuses there, but they target mainly international students and studying those studying business as well. We've been around for a very, very long time, so I'm sure you've heard about us, but we have been um, around for a, a very long time. We're actually Victoria's third oldest university, and we do offer over 100 undergraduate degrees. So I do have a lot of disciplines behind me here, um, but we do have a slide coming up with them in a little bit more detail. And when you study at La Trobe, it's more than just a classroom. You're not sitting in a classroom and having someone talk at you the whole time. You're actually getting out there and immersing yourself with industry as well. So we do have a lot of our degrees, specifically at the Shepparton campus, do have um, placement elements to them. So you actually have to go out on placement. Um, and our courses are actually co-designed with industry in mind. So we do work with industry partners so that our courses are tailored in a way um, that when you go out to the workforce, you are exactly what they're looking for and you've studied what they're looking for. Our courses are also available for you to study online, face-to-face -face, or a mixture of both. Um, being at the Shepparton campus, the majority of the courses are offered in a blended mode, so you do have some online study and some face-to-face -face study, but it really depends on the discipline that you're actually looking at. So these are our main disciplines that we offer at La Trobe. In Shepparton specifically, we do have nursing, uh, education and social work, and we do have fantastic pathways from GoTafe to these degrees as well. When you become a student with us, we do have a number of supports that can assist you with your study at a university level, especially if you're coming from a TAFE provider or haven't done study before. Uh, it can be quite overwhelming and it can be very new to you. So we do have a lot of programs and a lot of support services that you can access completely free of charge that can just help you with that university experience. Um, a lot of them obviously are listed there, but the main ones I like to point out is we do have peer learning advisors. Um, fancy way of saying a tutor, pretty much. So they're students that we employ on campus that you can actually book in and see uh, as often as you like. Um, and they will help you with structuring essays or and if you're not understanding the, the question or if you want someone just to read over your work to see if you're hitting those points, they can actually sit down and help you with that. And there is a, obviously a conception that um, the universities in general are quite expensive, so we do have a HEX help um, scheme that you can access as well, and that can just defer your tuition costs to a government funded loan, completely free of charge, and you can actually pay that back. Uh, when you see fit or when you earn over a certain amount. So there are a lot of options if you do become a student of La Trobe. And additionally to that, you do have scholarships. So being a university student, there is a lot of scholarships that are available. So it's always worthwhile having a look at to what you may be eligible for. Some scholarships, um, and even in particular this year, were awarded to students who were transitioning from a TAFE provider to one of our degrees. So worthwhile having a look to see if you meet those criteria because it can make a huge difference with your study. Now, how do you get into uni? So obviously there are a number of ways that you can get into uni. Um, but we're here tonight to talk mainly about our TAFE qualification, but we do have options if you are graduating from school, you can come through um, direct entry uh, or do one of our early offer programs, which is our SPI programs. TAFE is obviously a great stepping stone to university. Uh, we can look at any work history that you've done as well. Um, and as Billy will talk about when she's up here, she actually coupled her TAFE qualification with some work history and we were able to recognise her for entry into our degrees. You can transfer between degrees and we do have some other um, options there if you are looking to go straight to university. They are just stepping stones that can help you get there. 
Obviously, we have a fantastic partnership with GoTAFE and that's why we're here today to talk about this. So if you study a degree at GoTAFE, we can recognise that for entry into our degrees as well. Uh, generally speaking, we look at a certificate for or above. Uh, and in most cases, it can be a diploma qualification that can gain you entry into La Trobe University. And some cases, it can allow you to get credit towards your degree as well. So there's many benefits to having multiple, uh, multiple degrees, multiple qualifications, being at a TAFE provider and then obviously coming over to a university. There's a lot of benefits. Um, you have two different, completely different learning environments. You have some skills that you'll pick up from both of those, some soft skills and some hard skills as well. You'll have a bigger understanding of your study area. If you've started at a certificate level, they teach you in a different way than when you come into a bachelor level. So you have a really great base knowledge and understanding um, when you come onto our degree. You may already have employment in the field if you've already done a, a certificate or something at TAFE. You may already be employed and this can just um, help you to step up in your career or get another job within that role. Um, obviously, potentially increase your employability. You hold two qualifications, which always looks better on a resume. You can have that all listed there as well. And as I mentioned before, you can be eligible for entry into La Trobe University and you can or may be eligible for credit into your degree. So when we look at direct entry versus credit, just so you're aware, we can recognise a Cert 4 for direct entry into La Trobe. So we've got an example there of a Cert 4 in Allied Health Assistance. That can actually get you direct entry to our Diploma of Rural Health. Advanced standing is a fancy term that we use, it just means credit for the degree. So we can recognise a Cert 4 for entry into our degrees. It doesn't have to be our diploma levels, it can be our bachelor levels. Um, or you can be eligible for credit as well. So students who actually study the Diploma of Community Services at TAFE are eligible for one year credit towards the Bachelor of Social Work. So Bachelor of Social Work at La Trobe is a four year degree, but if you've already done your diploma, you actually enter into year two of our bachelor. So it's a three year degree for you to, from start to finish. These are our two, um, I'm going to go through our main degrees that we do transition from GoTAFE across to La Trobe. One of which is our Bachelor of Nursing and it's in our enrolled nurse intake. So this intake specifically is only for students who have done their Diploma of Nursing at TAFE um, or at a TAFE provider. Um, so you have to be completed your nursing program, your Diploma of Nursing, and you do need to be registered with APRA and you're eligible to enter into this program, which is a two year program in order to become a registered nurse at the end. Uh, it's a really great program, it's very popular and we do offer it in semester one each year. So it does coincide with the um, semester intakes for the Diploma of Nursing. And we also offer the Bachelor of Social Work, which I mentioned before. So if you do complete that Diploma of Community Services, you actually receive one year full credit and can go into year two of the program. The Bachelor of Social Work Honours is actually um, accredited with the Australian Association of Social Workers as well. So at the end of the degree, you can actually go and practice as a social worker. If you use your TAFE qualification to gain entry into La Trobe and then you change your mind or if you're using it as a pathway to get to a different degree, we also offer um, course transfers. So for instance, if you're wanting to go into something like occupational therapy, I've got an example there of a Bachelor of Health Science and generally speaking, a Bachelor of Health Science, you could do a certificate for at TAFE and use that for entry into our Bachelor of Health Science and then you could transition or pathway that way. Uh, education is another popular one, so if you were to do a Cert 4 and Ed support here at GoTAFE, you could actually use that to go into our Pathway program for our Bachelor of Education. So just be mindful that if it doesn't get you directly into the course that you're interested in, you can definitely pathway through a different course. The application process is pretty straightforward, so we do have an intake in semester two each year and an intake in semester one. Depending on what degree you are looking at will depend on when you need to apply and also how you have to apply. When you're coming from a TAFE provider, you do need that completed certificate in hand or uploaded to your application because that's what we're going to use to assess your application. If you have more than one certificate, if you've done a few qualifications through TAFE, if you've done some work history, uh, work experience or anything like that, you can also all use all of that to get an offer into your course. 
Um, if you ever have any questions, even if you're already studying at TAFE or you're looking at studying at TAFE, but you want to know the end goal and what you have to do to get to where you want to go um, at uni, you can always reach out to the team. We can book a consult consultation online and it comes through to me uh, and we can have a chat about that best pathway to get you where you want to go. Now I'm going to introduce Billy Ann, who's one of our students at La Trobe, and she's just going to talk a bit about her pathway to La Trobe and um, yeah, go through all of her information. Hi, um, education history and current course. So I am currently studying a Bachelor of Human Services, Masters of Social Work. Um, 2020, halfway through the year is when I applied and got in with my set for of community services that I did through GoTAFE. I did it on the Ash campus down near the Queen's Gardens um, and work history and a couple of other things that I threw in there, personal recognition letter and the recommendation letter from my lecturer at um, Ash. Um, yeah, so that brought me in there. Um, La Trobe has changed that degree now, so that's the Bachelor of Social Work Honours. Um, how I got into uni? I had one person that believed in me, <laughs> um, recommended that I jump in and go and have a look, so that's what I did. My first time applying, I actually got rejected. I didn't have everything in the proper order and everything in to get approved, so I didn't let that stop me. I tried again halfway through the year and got in, started in that semester, and it has been a whirlwind ever since. I wouldn't change it for anything, though. Um, my set four of community services was one of the free TAFE courses that was offered in 2019, which was incredible. If it wasn't free, that wouldn't have been something that I could have gotten onto and, and done. I'm a single mum of eight-year-old twins that keep me nice and busy and they're full, full of life. So having that opportunity for free TAFE really, really makes like huge impact on my future and their future. Um, I think the biggest difference between TAFE and uni are the assessments. That's about it. Everything else is, you know, pretty much the same. All the lecturers and teachers and stuff are easy to get a hold of and talk to and get support and reach out and opportunities and networking is all there and it's all amazing. But yeah, the assessments, that's, that's the biggest difference. Um, benefits, yeah, I think I just touched on that, like the networking and meeting people and um, like the student ambassador role that I do with La Trobe alongside my studies allows me to get out there and meet incredible people and do amazing things like this. Um, and TAFE was the same, you know, I got to meet so many different people that were all there for the same reason, which was to learn and get into the community services sector. Uh, how do I juggle it, all? juggle it all? Pretend that I'm really, really organised. <laughs> time management, I like to be early. Um, and setting aside a lot of time for quality family stuff and self-care and, you know, making sure that I'm organised and eating healthily. Um, and advice, I just realised that the screen was in front of me too. <laughs> advice to students considering undertaking a pathway, um, do it. You know, it's never too late. I'm definitely on the other side of my 20s now, a little bit further. Um, but it's not something like age isn't a barrier, where you've come from isn't a barrier. None of that can stop you if that's something that you really, really want to do. Um, and a pathway makes it interesting because you'll get to meet some amazing people along the way and really, you know, open that knowledge and that, that experience. So as Billy went through, she um, studied obviously at TAFE, which was really great, and then used that plus some work history to get into La Trobe. Um, one thing she didn't touch on is she's actually studying part-time, so that's something you can look at doing, so it helps you lower your workload, so you don't have to take on too much, especially with a young family. Okay, now I'm just going to introduce Karen, and she's going to go through the Uni of Melbourne. Hi, 
Hi everybody. Um, my name is Karen Edwards. I work out at the University of Melbourne Dukey campus, which is about halfway between Shepparton and Benalla, so just to our east. And I'm a lecturer out there, so I look after the studies who might consider doing it. Um, we have some TAFE, TAFE pathways, and I will um, talk about those. So you might be looking for a pathway into the, a University of Melbourne degree. Um, maybe you want to receive a diploma to enter the workforce. You might be uh, have just finished Year 12 and again looking for a pathway to Melbourne Uni. Um, and you might not have um, been offered courses of your preference, so you're looking at some different options. Um, or you may be a mature age student as well, so you might be looking to upskill, um, ease back into tertiary study, and again, um, getting some education behind you um, to do something further in the workforce or into the workforce. So, I have it summarised in a little diagram here. Um, if you have just finished Year 12, there's some ATAR requirements and, and, and things like that. But the one we're interested in today, we have these CERT 4 pathways, which are potentially old names now. Um, I'm sure there's a frontline management one, but any sort of management course could be um, considered. Also around conservation and land management, we have um, an accounting pathway. There's a cert for in tertiary prep that we recognise, or a cert for in agriculture as well. So um, there's certificate for pathways, then bring you into our diploma, and then take you on to our um, Melbourne Uni Bachelor degrees. Um, you can apply through BTAC or a direct application um, and the note there it is just for domestic students out of primary and general studies so you have to have some um, uh, qualifications around your um, uh, citizenships and things like that. Um, so the diploma in general studies you would study for one year full time or probably two years part time. It's made up of eight subjects and there's a few different choices and combinations of what you might do with us. And it depends where you want to go afterwards. So one of our most popular pathways is through to the Bachelor of Agriculture because it's at Dukey and it's an agriculture campus. We offer some <laughs> really good stuff in that space. Um, but the other thing that's quite different with this pathway is, um, with this um, diploma, is that we offer some basic science subjects that aren't really available in, um, uh, through sort of um, TAFE things as well. So if you want to do some science, like heading to a more um, sort of pure science, Bachelor of Science type area, you tend to have to have some maths or some chemistry or some biology behind you and we offer those subjects in the Diploma in General Studies as well. They're what um, universities call prerequisites. Some courses have them, some courses don't um, and we, you can pick up those prerequisites to move further along um, in our Diploma in General Studies. You'll see those little numbers next to the bachelors as well. So what they mean is they're the average scores you must get as a part of your diploma to move forward. So you just need a pass to move through to the Bachelor of Agriculture. But if you wanted to look at design, science or arts, you need an average of 75s. Um, Melbourne University has some very high entry requirements um, and some of this reflects some of that. Um, but the 75s is, uh, is very achievable. I've had lots of students particularly transition through to science and design. I was just looking at the figures today. I'm writing a big report um, at the moment. And um, I thought our two most popular were agriculture and science. Um, but design certainly right up there as well. So biomed with an um, average of 90 is probably very tricky. That's just what we have. Uh, so that's everything there. So this uh, this is a subject of um, what we offer in. Sorry, this is um, some information on what we offer with our subjects. So what we have, because this is a bit of a pathway course and a transition course, 
We offer a core subject called Academic Writing and Communication, and that's all the skills you need at university. So you're going to learn about writing essays, you're going to learn about referencing, you're going to learn about giving presentations, um, and the feedback we get on that subject um, every year is that students are really happy that it's offered and they have to do it because they pick up the things they need to be really successful at university. Then as you can see, we have um, some a whole range of subjects, some ag-based subjects, some science-based subjects, and then stuff that's a little bit um, more general as well, like climate change and impacts that um, is interesting. Um, and just noting there that DIGS is one of the only general study courses that offers both biology and chemistry subjects, so that's where we're a little bit different. Dukey Campus. So it is a uh, teaching farm. It's been there for over 100 years, teaching agriculture to a whole range of people. Um, and it is 2,400 hectares, so it's large. Um, the girl is there up on the Mount Major lookout, and when you get up on top of Mount Major, you can see the whole farm. It's just gorgeous. We have horse facilities at our farm, so if you want to bring your horse along while you're studying, you can do that as well. This young lady here did that for sure. It um, provides some residential um, capacity, so you could live on campus um, or commute out from, from Shepparton, and we have both. It's a real community um, spirit out there. It's a small cohort, so you get to know your um, fellow students and also your lecturers and we have lots of different facilities for recreation like a swimming pool and a gym and, and um, things like that and as I mentioned the uh, horse club um, and we have flexible and convenient on-campus accommodation um, so again you could live on campus full-time or maybe part-time depending on your, your situation or commute in and out as well we get students doing the Diploma in general studies from all around the state and even interstate as well. So uh, lots of different people undertake this course. We have two intakes. So in semester one, we run the normal university year, semester one, semester two. Semester one, we're about to finish. We've got one week left next week. Um, and it starts in um, around the end of February and the semester two, which will start in July after we have um, a bit of a break there. Um, you can do an application through BTAC or you can go um, direct as I said. So if you were to um, undertake a certificate for through, B, through free TAFE, you would just need that completed and all done and then you could do an application either through the VTAC system or um, directly as well. And once you come through us in the Diploma in General Studies, you um, will have a guaranteed entry into our bachelor programs if you meet those requirements that they sort of talked about with the schools and the subject choices and, and things like that. Um, Hayley's not here, but I thought I would just include this. So she came into the Diploma in General Studies and now has gone off into a Bachelor of Science. And um, just a little bit around student experience. This is some of the younger students um, off doing some social things. Um, we um, have um, often do um, some social occasions up at our winery, go out on field trips to um, strawberry farms and enter in mixed netball teams um, in the vanilla comp at the moment that um, would potentially do something in Shepparton as well. So there's a, a bit of a student life um, happening on the Dookie campus as well. I should, probably shouldn't have had that slide in. So, because that's all happy Great. Thank, right. Thank you very much. Laura, well, well, lots of information this evening from uh, all about free tape and free tape pathways, different ways that you can get yourself into university. Um, it's interesting to note, you know, sometimes we think there's only one way to sort of achieve the goal that we're chasing, but as you'll hear heard tonight, there's more than one way to be able to achieve the goals. And um, certainly in Billy Ann's case, 
hearing about how the difference the free TAFE made to give her that opportunity to be able to progress her education and without it she couldn't have kept going and that opportunity might not have been there for her. So thank you in particular to you, Billy Ann, for sharing that story. We really appreciate the time you've given up um, tonight to, to be here and certainly to Alicia and to Karen as well. Um, there's so much out there in our local community and sometimes we just don't really know what's available. Um, we're happy to take questions this evening if anybody has any. If you do need to head off, um, you can certainly scan this QR code which is on screen at the moment and um, that'll take you through to a form where you can ask your question. If it's not something that's for me, I'm going to be passing that on to Alicia or Karen. Um, if you need to uh, book a career appointment and get any guidance at all or you've got questions around TAFE, please come and see us at the Skills and Jobs Centre. And thank you so much for joining us this evening, giving up your time. Really appreciate it.